Van Sinker. These guys are bad to the bone and beyond. Do you know what real love is, Crystal? No. Sacrifice. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 action movie villains. For this list, we've looked at live action movies only and nothing based on a comic book. We've also excluded specific genres of action because we've already got you covered with the top 10 sci-fi movie villains, the top 10 scariest horror movie villains, and many, many more. Sometimes these things do not go as planned. As you say, they just happen. Hey, Peter. Number 10, Eric Quaylen, Cliffhanger. Let me jar your memory. Turning snow-strewn mountains into the place of nightmares, Quaylen is the abominable snowman with guns and heavy artillery. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone's Gabe Walker is the bright light in a dark abyss. He's mountain rescue with extra muscle. Nice try. Quaylen is the master puppeteer, though, as he kidnaps Gabe and has him negotiate the perilous landscape in search of $100 million. Would you have thought of that? He's ex-military gone mad. He's attitude at altitude and a real cold killer. Kill a few people, they call you a murderer. Kill a million, and you're a conqueror. Go figure. Number nine, Ivan Korzhenov, Air Force One. You think I'm a monster? That I would kill this man, somebody's son. Gary Oldman's Korzhenov is the Russian terrorist leader behind a particularly daring hijack. Open the door! Open the door! Air Force One is quite the machine, but it isn't impenetrable. Harrison Ford is quite the president, but he isn't untouchable. Where is my husband? He has fled. The coward chose to save himself. Korzhenov is a mid-air madman and a nasty negotiator. Tell me what I want to hear, or I will execute a member of the senior staff and continue killing one hostage every minute until the plane crash or refueling plane arrive. Using Ford's wife and daughter as bargaining tools, he's a rebel supporter, and he's gone crazy in the cockpit. No, I have no choice. You have the choice. He's at 30,000 feet, but villains rarely stoop this low. You make one mistake! We have killed my pilot, Mr. President! No one left to fly the plane! Number eight, Bill Stranix and Commander Krill under siege. God damn it! There. Welcome to the USS Missouri. Not all bad guys get to make an entrance alongside a Playboy model. With Erica Aleniak in tow, Bill Stranix poses as a caterer and proceeds to give the captain of the USS Missouri a birthday to remember. This insanity is so logical. Helped by his mole on the inside, Commander Krill, Stranix and his mid-Pacific pirates turn a routine voyage into a sea-soaked disaster. You're a maniac. Drown your own crew. They want missiles, and they'll make hell or high water to get them. You tried to kill me, you son of a bitch. So welcome to the revolution. There's more to follow. I'll stay in touch. Number seven, Alec Trevelyan or 006, Goldeneye. The name's Trevelyan, Alec Trevelyan. Nope, it just doesn't have the same ring. James Bond's one-time friend ditches the second-rate name, though, and starts going by Yanis. Close to Judas in spelling, but it's way more criminal. No longer just an anonymous star on the memorial wall at MI6. What's the matter, James? No glib remark? No pithy comeback? He fakes his own death, gains access to Goldeneye, and uses the electromagnetic mega weapon to try to take over the world. He escaped. Good for Bond. Bad for you. It's a grand plan for a grand villain. 
He may be 006, but on this list, he's our number seven. Why can't you just be a good boy and die? You first. Number six, General Francis X. Frank Hummel, The Rock. Fire. Fire! He's good guy turned bad, then turned a little bit good again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're being detained against your will, for that I apologize. Ed Harris's General Hummel was a well-respected U.S. Marine. Now he's got some serious beef with the American government. Can you live with that? Yes, sir! He wants $100 million compensation for soldiers that die in secret service to their country. I tried. You know I tried everything. And I still don't have their attention. A noble cause compared to some. But to get it, he has seized some chemical weaponry, taken over Alcatraz, and threatened to poison the whole of San Francisco. Well, now we can add kidnapping and extortion to his list of accolades. It's unconventional and very unhinged. You've got 40 hours till noon, day after tomorrow, to arrange transfer of the money. I am aware of your countermeasure. You know and I know it doesn't stand a chance. Hummel from Alcatraz, out. Number five. Owen Davian, Mission Impossible 3. Quiet. Read this. Slowly. As Davian, Philip Seymour Hoffman is at his bad guy best. Bringing Tom Cruise out of early retirement, he'll stop at nothing to get the enigmatic rabbit's foot. I'm gonna make her bleed and cry and call out your name. And you're not gonna be able to do shit. You know why? What is a rabbit's foot? Because you're going to be this close to dead. Cruz, as Ethan Hunt, knows as little as we do about the mysterious MacGuffin. But it's clear that this bunny isn't going to be cute and fluffy. For Hoffman, villainy is all in the delivery. He's the devil with a deadpan expression. He's cold-hearted, and he couldn't care less. Ten. No! No! An impervious man for an impossible mission. Well, that was nothing. That was um, fun. Number four, Cyrus the Virus Grissom, Con Air. AKA Cyrus the Virus, 39 years old, 25 of them spent in our institutions. Some prisoners are good at heart, and some are bad all the way through. John Malkovich's Cyrus Grissom is in the latter category. My dad is coming home on July 14th. My birthday is July 14th. As toxic as his nickname suggests, Cyrus the Virus is flying his way to freedom in the most destructive way possible. Where are you going with my plane, Cyrus? We're going to Disneyland. He takes out cops, he takes out cons, and he's trying to take out Nicolas Cage. He's half escapologist and half lunatic. You lost your mind? According to my last psych evaluation, yes. He's wearing orange, but seeing red. A very dangerous man. Please. Sai. Anara. Number three, Caster Troy, face off. If I were to let you suck my tongue. Would you be grateful? Mm -hmm. In a complete role reversal, Nick Cage steps onto our podium as this big time baddie. Oh no, I, I see, I see. You, you think I'm bluffing. Maybe I am, but then maybe I'm not. So terrible that one body can't contain him, Cage soon transplants to John Travolta, and the Kill Crazy crossover has us captivated and a little confused. Wait, you get looking. You're hot. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. It's kind of similar to a lot of body swap stories, but this one's got way more bloodshed. Touche. Also, unlike Freaky Friday, Face Off gives us Caster Troy, a legendary and ever so eccentric villain. Oh. Isn't this religious? Number two, Howard Payne, Speed. Pop quiz, hot shot. Terrace holding a police hostage. He's got enough dynamite strapped to his chest to blow a building in half. Now, what do you do? 
Our runner-up is the ultimate bad cop. Nothing personal. A retired member of the Atlanta PD bomb squad, Howard Payne knows a thing or two about disarming explosives, and now he's hell-bent on setting them off. You think I wouldn't have been prepared? Two years I spent setting up that elevator job. Two years I invested myself in it. You couldn't understand the kind of commitment that I have. First he targets an elevator, then he hits a bus. There must be something about compact transportation vehicles that really gets this guy going. You can't beat me, you're gonna pay me every dollar. Otherwise, you, the Wildcat, and every innocent person on that bus are gonna end up just like your friend. His terror tactics are high octane. The speed limit concept is genius. Payne is just a world-class criminal. There's a bomb on a bus. Once the bus goes 50 miles an hour, the bomb is armed. If it drops below 50, it blows up. What do you do? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You think Rambo was the only guy who had a tough time in Vietnam? He killed a police officer, for Christ's sake. You're goddamn lucky he didn't kill all of you. Over so soon, I want my money's worth. Come on, get up. Coming right up. We do have a serious diplomatic situation here which I will be taking up with your State Department first thing in the morning. Well, you got me quaking in my boots, but I'm still gonna bring you down. Do you know why you've been brought here? So that this man can verify to the world the Crimson Jihad is now a nuclear bomb. Number one. Ladies and gentlemen. Hans Gruber, Die Hard. Ladies and gentlemen. We don't know what the Gruber family eats for breakfast, but it's a sure bet that the milk is sour. You're amazing. You figured this all out already. Brother Simon could have topped this list, but we've opted for Hans, John McClane's original terror-crazed nemesis. This is very kind of you. As you are our mysterious party crasher, you are most troublesome for a security guard. Alan Rickman is in his evil element as this skyscraping supervillain. He shoots to kill. He dresses to kill. Go on. Movies don't come more action-packed than Die Hard, and bad guys don't come more villainous than Gruber. And when Alexander saw the breadth of his domain, he wept, for there were no more worlds to conquer. He defines the role, and he's the best of a very bad bunch. Uh, due to the Nakatomi Corporation's legacy of greed around the globe, they're about to be taught a lesson in the real use of power. Do you agree with our list? Which villain did we forget? I hope you understood what was happening here today. I'd rather not jump to any wrong conclusions. For more Tough Top Tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Get off my plane. <laughs>